the topic today is 10 tips for how to build more rapport with sales prospects. Let's start out with some assumptions before we dive into the subject of rapport. There's, this, there's an assumption that many of us have that people buy from people they like. Really, regardless of what you sell, you, you tend to feel more comfortable and uh, build relationships with salespeople when you like them, right? So if you, the more rapport you have with someone, the more people will like you. Not to really d d dig into the, the definition of what rapport is, but that's a pretty safe assumption. The, the more chemistry and rapport you have, the more people will like you. So that, that creates a very simple uh, calculation of or equation of if you can increase the level of rapport you have with people overall and the amount of rapport you're able to build organically then in theory more of the prospects you deal with will buy from you and it's not necessarily uh, something real direct or visible such as you have you create rapport with someone and then you close the transaction there shortly after uh, a lot of it might be that you create rapport with someone and they don't try to get off the phone with you immediately and you and then you're able to schedule an appointment and when you go on the appointment they feel a little bit of rapport so they share a little bit more information about what's going on in their environment and because they share a little bit more information you're able to build a better business case and you know it's those real subtle changes that create rapport and the increased rapport can lead to an improvement in your results one thing I want to talk about is real quick is I don't believe that you can manufacture rapport and I'll give you an example uh, there's a restaurant about a block from where I live that I go to often sometimes by myself and I'll sit at the bar and, and have dinner and there's a couple different bartenders and I don't know whether it's the training over there or, or what but there's one bartender that I don't know at all and uh, she always calls me hun and honey right and it it feels like a very it doesn't feel real authentic it feels um it feels like you know she's trying to manufacture rapport if, if that's my assessment of it um, maybe it's just the way she communicates or whatever but i think she's just trying to be sweet and thinking that being sweet creates rapport and rapport creates a bigger tip and there's another bartender over there that calls me sweetheart um, i don't think it has anything to do with me I, I think i think they do it with everybody and i I personally don't like it. Uh, it'd be one thing if I knew them, and then every once in a while they called me hun or sweetheart. That that is really nice, a nice touch. But just to do it all the time to people you don't know, and then to do it to everybody, it's just. It, I mean, it's not causing any detrimental issues to their tips. But it, I don't think it, it. I I use that as an example to say, I don't think you can push someone to create rapport by you know treating them uh, by saying certain things that flatter them by using a tone that's real sweet maybe some people buy into that I just personally don't so these are my assumptions so take that for whatever you whether you agree with it or disagree with it um, I uh, like a lot of there's a lot of women in sales that might use sort of sex appeal and 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 that might work actually I think that does probably worked in their favor um, but I, j I don't think that necessarily that that creates rapport maybe it does I don't know <laughs> all I'm saying is I'm gonna give you uh, tips that are more authentic and and more subtle uh, for generating rapport a couple assumptions that are more specific to buying and selling uh, and and those those will lead to how we'll sort of try to reverse engineer rapport is I put you know you you you're if you're watching this you're a salesperson you have something to sell and you're always worried about maybe annoying people or pushing people away but the reality is is that I think that it's fun that people and businesses and and buyers actually enjoy buying stuff you know when you've when you're convinced that something's good and it can help you or it can deliver some sort of uh, improvement to you your life your business you enjoy buying stuff uh, there's something there's a new Thing that I'm in the process of getting set up on our website and I'm spending money on it and but I can't wait for it to be finished I, I've been I've really enjoyed buying that so somebody buying something is not the problem 
with either a rapport being de decreased or not existing the the thing that I think is is that I don't think that people enjoy being sold to I think that it can be kind of annoying it can push people away it can rub people the wrong way when someone tries too hard to sell it can uh, it can make someone feel uncomfortable and that can definitely decrease rapport the reason why it doesn't feel good I think sometimes when someone when someone's trying to sell to you uh, versus you going and buying something is that you even if you know even if you need something it doesn't feel good when someone tries to talk you into wanting something like um, like have you ever like agreed to do something and someone just continued to try to talk you into it you're like you might have thought, "Hey, I'm you. You can stop. You know, you. I'm already." Or has someone? Have you wanted something? This is maybe a better example. Have you wanted something, but someone tried so hard to talk you into it that you didn't want to give in? You didn't want to give them the benefit of of talking you into it or tricking you into making a decision, being manipulative, or or maybe someone might. Uh, you might you might be looking at a purchase. And you don't want to be taken advantage of. Uh, I'll give you an example of this. I was in, I was actually in Asia a few months ago, and things are extremely cheap over there. Um, you know what? What's a what? What is um, a couple dollar? Well, let let me just say this. If something something could be at like a tenth of the price, and so where over here it might be two or three dollars, which is no big deal. You wouldn't lose sleep if you if it fell out of your wallet. Over there, it's a lot of money. And so while you really don't care if if someone you wouldn't care about buying something for two or three dollars because it's so minimal over here, since it's so much over there, you don't want to look a, you don't want to look like a fool. So you it, I mean, when you kind of figure out that someone's taking advantage of you, like a, a street vendor selling you a, a T-shirt for for four dollars when you think okay a t-shirt in the US is ten to twenty dollars so that's a good deal well four dollars is they're ripping you off so you don't want to be taken advantage of because that doesn't feel good you, you still might get a t-shirt at a very low price but it doesn't feel good to look like a fool um, and you you don't you, of course you don't want to buy something you don't you don't need so when someone's pushing something on you you might be interested but do I really need this do I really need this neck massager you know my it feels good when I'm standing here in the mall but am I really going to use this when I go home so do I really need this and there's pressure on that making a decision so the, the, all of those create a lot of pressure you don't want to be tricked manipulated made a fool and buy something you don't need so that's why when someone be, is very salesy to you you might just start to be annoyed or uncomfortable or and then when you add that up to prospects and buyers being approached by a lot of different salespeople for example in b2b if they're a, a ceo of a company they get tried to sold to uh, by a lot of salespeople so you add it up of a lot of people bombarding this person and trying to trying to take from them right so it can be annoying it can be overwhelming and it can create this very negative situation so here's here's our approach for today talking about 10 tips in, in that if if we can agree to those assumptions that salespeople can be annoying and it can be annoying and bothersome to um, to be sold to and if that decreases the level of comfort and rapport that you have with someone when they're trying hard to manipulate you sell you talk you into something if we agree on that well then can could we say that if we if we make small changes that either avoid that or do the opposite of that well then maybe that will create rapport and so that's our approach today here these ten things pretty much most of them are just kind of the opposite they're the opposite of sounding like a salesperson trying to push push a product on somebody so the very first one is to use a sales takeaway and this is kind of an advanced technique but if you think about um, a salesperson pushing to close a deal to close a sale you need this are you ready to purchase a takeaway is the exact opposite saying well you know maybe maybe this isn't the right thing for you so it's the exact opposite so to push is to say you'll you'll love this you need it buy it the opposite is the takeaway which is to say maybe this isn't right for you maybe you shouldn't move forward right so it's an advanced technique in that when do you do this you know why would a salesperson ever take away something and and you know if you have this goal of selling and you get paid when you sell why would you ever take something away well there's a strategic reason why to and really 
the topic here today is to build rapport. So the, the point here is, is that when you do a takeaway, it builds rapport. And the reason why it builds rapport is because it's the opposite of what the pushy salesperson does. So the pushy salesperson pushes when you take away like um, let me give you some examples and then I'll kind of explain some of the effects. So like you could be in a situation where you're talking to someone like let's say you're in a meeting and you're asking them some questions and they're talking about the systems they're using and how sophisticated they are you know you might say something like well man it sounds like you guys are doing pretty good over here I'm not sure if you guys even really need what we sell you know so that's a that's a a, a, a version of a takeaway maybe maybe we're not a right the right fit for you right now maybe now is not the best time for you to look at this so let me give you a real example actually um, I and I was thinking about this when I put the slide together was um, when I was sort of in my fur just out of school and I, I went car shopping with my, a, a girlfriend of mine at the time and we had sort of a unique car salesperson and she was kind of stressing about the purchase this was like her first uh, independent car purchase and the car salesman said to her you know if you're if you're if you're if you have so much stress about this purchase maybe this isn't the right time for you to make the purchase he did a takeaway and it was such a really refreshing thing to especially in a car sales situation which is ultra aggressive you know they don't want you to leave the the, the car lot without a new car and he was basically doing a takeaway well you know I mean maybe this isn't the right time for you well she really wanted the car and it was the right time she was just a little nervous and 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 she ended up moving forward the thing about the takeaway is that it is you, you want to do it at the right time so you, if someone says I'm ready to sign the contract then you don't want to do a takeaway and say well maybe this isn't the right con maybe this isn't the right d direction for you right you don't you, you you move forward but if someone's on the fence or you know having some doubts um, you know you maybe do a slight takeaway to either get movement either to get them to move forward or you get them out of your way if they're not going to pull the trigger so kind of if they're on the fence we also you know kind of teach sort of soft takeaways which are you can kind of pepper throughout conversations like for example if you're starting a cold call uh, you might say to someone you know like after you deliver your value proposition you might say but you know what I'm not sure if you're a good fit for us I'm not sure if you all need what we provide I'm not sure if you're the right person to speak with or not so you kinda express this doubt and it's just getting back to the topic today of rapport it's less pushy right you're you're letting someone have a little bit of room you're kinda doing a takeaway and then if they come back to you or they stay they're more comfortable and you're doing a small change that creates a little bit of rapport here's a whole uh, webinar on uh, sales takeaway at this link number two is do do what you can to not sound like you're you're somebody trying to sell something right so that was kinda of what we started out talking about trying to to not be that salesperson trying to sell something so uh, this is kinda of, this slide kinda of shows our uh, uh, an overview of our methodology but the, the the on the left side, I kind of have the the pushy salesperson who is more likely to have minimal rapport or have challenges at building rapport. But that salesperson uses more of a product sell, sales pitch, a product selling sales pitch. So they kind of lead with, "Hey, this is the company I work for. This is what we sell. This is how it works. This is how much it costs. Hey, do you guys need this? Are you guys buying this? Can I schedule a meeting with you to talk about your needs?" So whether that or not that sounds familiar to you or not that's what I think me personally that's what I think most salespeople kinda use in the world I get prospect I get emails and calls from prospects all the time and an email looks exactly like that and you could you, each of those lines can be a sentence in an email hello hello I'm with sales scripter we provide a sales training methodology and software it's it, it help you know blah 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 so uh, can I schedule a meeting with you to talk about whatever so that's that's that is what most salespeople do when you do that you sound like a salesperson trying to sell something and I think you're more, less likely to build rapport so we teach a more consultative approach so instead of focusing on the product you sell and the company focus more on the, the benefits you deliver the pain points you address asking good questions highlighting customer examples that you've helped highlighting how you differ 
highlighting ROI that you deliver and trying your your pitch is around starting conversations not closing sales so that's our approach now the reason why I show that with tip number two of try not to sound like a salesperson if you're on the left you sound like a salesperson trying to sell something if you're on the right you still might sound like a representative for a company that might have a product to offer but it's it's a less pushy uh, approach it's more consul consultative um, yeah so here's a whole webinar on consultative selling number three is to display humility and the definition of humility I'll just read this to you so it's it's the quality of being modest and respectful humility in various interpretations is widely seen as a virtue in many religious and philosophical traditions being connected with notions of transcendent unity with the un with the universe or the divine and the egolessness so a little bit fluffy there at the end but I, I, I'm and I'm the one who underlined these three words so remember our we're, we're trying to reverse engineer right so if the pushy salesperson kills rapport then how do we not sound like the pushy salesperson well the words that are underlined are almost sort of the opposite of the pushy salesperson right modest respectful egoless so this is a, a way for you to kind of present yourself as uh, you know more uh, having more humility I'll give you an example um, and I think sports athletes, you know, over the decades, I think sports athletes either have either been coached or whatever uh, in interviews when they win championships or big games or whatever to display more humility. So it, the like you could have a star athlete, you know, whether it's LeBron James or Steph Curry or whoever, um, who is really the reason why the team won, right? And there was even an interview with LeBron James. Um, last week, where he when he, he he carried the team on his back to win the series, and they were saying they were giving him a lot of props in the interview, and he he squashed all the praise and redirected it to the team. It was a team effort. He couldn't have done it without the team. And so in that moment, he's displaying humility, right? He could easily say, "Well, you know, this is what I was born to do. I try real." I've, been practicing really hard I'm just glad that the team had me <laughs> had me on it you know whatever I mean he could easily in fact in, a, in he could easily take a lot of the attention and the, the praise but to display humility is a very refreshing thing to do so the reason why I bring this up really with selling is it's actually kind of counterintuitive for salespeople to display humility and the reason why is we're whether it's in in school before we're a salesperson or when we're you know working in our sales organization we're really taught and groomed to be the best you know it's about getting good grades in school it's about hitting your sales quota it's about where you know hitting your targets so we you know there's this real culture of you know be the best not I'm not saying you shouldn't try to be the best um, there's there's an emphasis on the alpha is the best the the you know be you be the more alpha male or alpha female and and that's your your path to success you have to be aggressive and you have to have a type a personality and the reality is, is that those are all kind of the opposite of being of having humility i mean you can be the best and still have humility just like lebron james you know or or you know an athlete in that moment where he 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 you know credits the team with the win but this is kind of how the salesperson is groomed and so it's really hard to display humility when you're presenting or meeting with 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 prospects but sometimes displaying a little humility can build rapport right that's what we're talking about here is show, showing being when you're in a meeting with clients instead of trying to strut your stuff so much and where what I'm trying to avoid with this tip is I, I've been in situations whether I'm the buyer or I'm, I'm on a um, the seller where uh, you know I can see the salesperson coming into the room like Mr. Suave and that doesn't build rapport you don't want the the, the buyer to think who does this guy think he is you know and he's gonna come in here and he thinks he's gonna sell me all this stuff and, and make all this money off of me you don't want that right so even knowing um, you the salesperson thinks that it's better to be suave and cool sometimes to be a little bit more down-to-earth and real is uh, better for building rapport and it's that rapport that can help you throughout the sales process but here, here are just some tips for you know displaying humility I mean it's real minor but 
I'm not saying to make mistakes, but if a, if a mistake is made, I, I Lord knows I've seen people make mistakes that they wouldn't um, wouldn't wouldn't take uh, ownership of, you know. And it takes a really big person to say, "Oh, oops, that was I made that error, and uh, let me get that fixed, and I'll you know I'll, I'm going to try everything I can to not make it again." Um, you can maybe think of some political some some people in politics that you know are have too much ego and pride to admit that they've made a mistake you know well there's something real real um, uh, powerful about being some there's something that is actually more strong about having the courage to admit that you make a mistake than trying to display that you're strong but and never making mistakes so um, admit that you don't know the answer so I mean like we you know for inside sales people that work for me I tell them you you don't know all the answers and questions are going to come up be very quick don't worry about that be very quick to say you know what I'm 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 not the person that know, that has the answer to that question um, let me can let me schedule a meeting with you and the person that does have that answer whether so first the, the first thing there is being being um, confident enough to be able to admit that you don't know everything and have the answer um, being able to admit that you're not you're not perfect you know that you have weaknesses uh, admit that you're not an expert in certain areas so certainly if if you're a salesperson and you know for example if you sell technical products you're there's a lot of knowledge that's going to be involved in the sales process that you don't have you know you might be the quarterback and so admitting that you don't have the instead of trying to pretend like you know everything being uh, able to communicate that you don't being able to laugh at yourself uh, an example of that is if you're walking down the street and you trip on a crack in the in the concrete do you look around do you look around to see if anybody saw you trip and do you act like it was a strut and you kind of change your walk to kind of act like that's kind of how you walk because you're embarrassed right or do you laugh at yourself and say oh my god I and and maybe someone you're with do you say you just missed it I almost just cracked my head open by tripping on this crack you know and do you laugh at yourself so that is displaying humility um, and just being real but let's, let's just move on and keep going um, compliment the competition so an, an example of this and I, I've done this in in, in my past um, where you know when I was a salesperson working for um, m there were there was a situation where I worked for kind of a tier three company and everybody that I sold to was either getting a proposal from tier one company or um, they were using tier one company so um, you know their name would come up a lot and so it would you know so an example of this might be like you know something like hey we're also looking at prototech oh okay yes well you know I I know prototech very well and you know they have a pretty good platform uh, but one way that they differ is differ from us is that blah 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 so what happens here is that instead of and it's just subtle and all of these tips are subtle right but instead of saying oh yeah well with with prototech you want to watch out because of this the subtlety the subtle change is that I said oh yeah they, they, their platform is pretty pretty good right and so w just by making that subtle compliment to them uh, then that can create a few it can help to build rapport in a couple ways one is it displays that you're confident right so if you're if you're someone who is so threatened by everybody else around you then maybe you have an inferior product uh, or you're an inferior salesperson so when you don't have anything good to say or you're quick to to bad mouth the competition it shows it might display weakness and people are less likely to build rapport with people that they see as weak so you can display confidence by saying something good about the competition it can position you more as an advisor by so by saying what areas the other company is good and weak then your buyer might be getting uh, more knowledge from you you know you're giving them sort of the a, a little bit of the industry you know the the industry report that shows all the competitors uh, even knowing it should be not be treated as even knowing information from you should not be treated as completely unbiased they would be foolish to get your report and say oh well 
you know, here's where everybody's good and bad, but they're getting a little bit of a, of a flavor of that from you. You know, oh yeah, they're, they're pretty good at this. The thing that they're not great at is this. And you know, also the thing is, is that when you say what someone is good at, it gives you more credibility to say what they're bad at. So if you don't give them a compliment and you just say, oh yeah, they're, they're, their system's trash or whatever, <laughs> maybe you might say it better than that. But you know, if, you, if all you do is bad mouth them, then for all they know, then you're not real trustworthy. But if you compliment and, you, and give the negative, um, it's all more believable and you're seen more as an advisor. And like I said, builds credibility builds trust so just something to, to test there it's it only it only happens in certain situations you know t well if you get into a sales cycle where you're you're presenting right then you should you should ask oh do you mind if I ask who you got who else you or uh, or you, you can even be more direct and, and the, the question I was gonna say was do you mind if I ask who who else you guys are looking at but one way to del deliver that with getting a better answer is just being real direct and saying oh who else are you guys looking at so you don't don't include the do you mind and and then they might say company a and company b and then that's a great point great moment to say oh yeah these guys are good at that those guys are good at this the way that we differ from all of those people is this uh understand the prospect so a, a book that i'll recommend if you haven't read it is seven habits of highly effective people by dr stephen covey so one of the habits uh, is seek first to understand in order to be understood. So this is a really good, cool um, way to communicate and way to kind of, it's it's really, I guess, an interpersonal uh, tactic, interpersonal communications tactic. But what it kind of deals with is that, um, and even in, in the book, uh, this in this book, they use an example of like a, a parent and a child disagreeing about something right and so uh, if the parent just holds their ground and then the child is going to hold their position and then no one there's not going to be any agreement but in the book it uses an example of the parent when they're trying to um, get persuade the child to change or whatever they 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 share with the child that they understand their situation so before they kind of make their case they start out with oh I understand you uh, you know uh, you've you've been cooped up all day and now you want to you know stay out all night with your friends I I know what that's like I I was a kid once too and then they and then they deliver the bad news or whatever they they want to to say after that but the the tactic there is is that you're letting the other person know that you understand where they're coming from um, let me give you another example so let's say you're disagreeing with your spouse and you want to eat Chinese and they want to eat Mexican food for dinner and you're both going back and forth and no one's giving right so you know to, to let them know you, you you instead of just saying listen I really want you know it, it's got to be Chinese and you both hold your ground you before you plead your case you could say something like hey listen I understand you love Mexican you haven't had Mexican food in a while you're you're probably craving a margarita because it's Friday night um, but uh, I just had Mexican last night so for me to have Mexican two nights in a row is really boring <laughs> whatever the, the the thing there is that instead of just saying I had Mexican last night and plead your case you're starting out with communicating that you understand the other person you and and the thing is is that we, we all have this thing in us that where we we feel like we need to un, be understood I'll give you another example of where why of how it might feel like that you long or need to be understood um, there's been situations where there was a show you know on TV Seinfeld years ago um, there's a new kind of version of it curb your enthusiasm on HBO now I don't know if you've watched either of those shows but you could just picture like a comedy series right and it, it's kind of really applies to those two shows because there are some hilarious things that could end up on that like on Seinfeld and you could try to explain an episode to someone and if they didn't see it they won't think it's funny at all and you can explain this to someone and they don't laugh at all and you think it's hilarious and you could feel frustrated in that moment because 
you're trying to explain something and they don't understand. They don't understand you. They don't understand what you're explaining. They don't understand why you think it's funny. And then compare that frustration to the same conversation someone else walks up and they watch the same episode. And then you only have to explain it halfway to this other person and they watched it and they're laughing along with you and they understand you. And think about how refreshing that is and and whatnot. So um, that is a little bit uh, of an example of how it's important for us to be understood when you have all these emotions and thoughts and when someone understands what's going on with you it can be refreshing and so applying that to rapport if you're a salesperson and you have a prospect and the salesperson understands the prospect then the prospect might be more likely to feel rapport and comfort with that person um, I'll give you an example in, in the sales world so um, you know you might have a gatekeeper who is being really uh, difficult with you and you can you can just kind of try to be difficult back and have this battle and the gatekeeper is going to win the battle right and you could have this standoff or you could just kind of pause and you could let the gatekeeper know that uh, that you that you understand them and the way that sounds like is um, you can say hey you know what listen I, I understand you you answer calls all day long and a big chunk of those are from probably people like me calling in trying to find out who does what and 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 maybe trying to get meetings so I understand I understand what it's like um, but then blah 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 then you you might have some sort of business case for why they should let you in or whatever at the end uh, all I'm saying is is that instead of just delivering the business case or being difficult or whatever or powering through you can sometimes pause and communicate that you understand and just by you saying letting that gatekeeper know that that yeah you know that they that you I mean all day long they talk to people like you and that is you know frustrating for them that th that could decrease their guardedness just a little bit tip six is to respect the prospects time so it, I think it's safe to assume that especially in B2B I mean, you could always say the prospect is busy, but especially in the B2B world where you're doing, you know, cold pros phone prospecting, cold email prospecting, whatever, you know that the prospects are busy. They're doing a million things. Um, so I want you to kind of picture, uh, picture yourself in an office, in an office environment, and you you have two coworkers. One coworker is in their office. Uh, they're typing away. The, the phone's ringing, they're working on three different things, and the, the, co -work, the other coworker just walks in and sits down at the, the chair in front of their desk and starts talking to them about, them about their weekend, right? So imagine how that person that's extremely busy feels, right? They, they don't have time for it, and it's an interruption, and, and it's rude. Uh, maybe maybe the person is so busy that they could use a break and and to to have some chit chat because they're the uh, um but the fact that the person just sits down with the person visibly busy and just starts talking away about the weekend it could rub the person the wrong way and be like i mean are you not even going to ask you know if if i have yeah, you know ask if I'm in the middle of something or whatever so it could actually that type of situation could de decrease rapport those are the types of people that you know in, in offices there's people that people like and there's people that are, people find abrasive right so there's small things that make people abrasive and like the things we're talking about here today should make you less abrasive right so but if we assume that uh, prospects are busy then we can we can um, confer we can respect their time and by respecting their time uh, then we can build a little bit of rapport you know and or not decrease rapport uh, applying this to prospects so if you're calling someone so this could be a warm call it could be a follow-up call it could be a cold call but in fact I mean I do this when I talk to like colleagues so it doesn't just have to be prospects but if there's something unscheduled, I always open up a phone call with, hey, are you in the middle of anything? I mean, I, I might even do this to a family member, you know, because I might have some, some, some story I want to tell them, 
but for all I know, they're they're watching a, a movie or something, or they're doing the laundry or whatever. So, hey, have I caught you in the middle of anything? In fact, this is actually more of a question that you might ask in a very casual setting. So, I like applying this to to cold calling because it's sort of disarming for prospects. When a, a, instead of a salesperson says the cheesy thing like, "I know you're busy, so I'll only take a few minutes of your time," or I'll, uh, "Is this a bad time for you?" You know. So instead of that, I, I always ask, "Hey, have I caught you in the middle of anything?" Because it's just very familiar and casual, and and it helps to to build rapport uh, because you're respecting the other person's time. You, while you're on a call, you might also want to just check in and say. Are you available to discuss this right now? So an example of that might be you, let's say you, you, you're on the phone and you've been chatting for a couple minutes and you end up getting into a deeper conversation. So you might want to check in with them and say, hey, you know, we're, I got a few more questions I want to ask you actually and we're kind of getting into this deep conversation. Are you sure you're available to discuss this right now or should we, should we schedule some time to get back to this? Um, and so, again, the, the, the concept here is respecting time, and respecting time can sh res build rapport. Uh, you, there, and if you haven't noticed, these are all subtle, right? So these are just minor changes with how changing how you interact with, with people. And um, there are definitely ways that you can do that in formal scheduled meetings. So whenever I start a, a meeting, I always confirm that we're still available, right? So, and this this can apply to to virtual meetings. I do a lot of virtual meetings, given the nature of my business. But um, whether you're face to face, one of the first questions, I mean, because you might have had a meeting scheduled, and something may have changed between then and and the time that you either arrive on site or or end up on the call. So, I always ask, hey, are you you sh you're still good for this this meeting? Um, I might ask, hey, do we have a hard stop? Because the, the, you might have put 30 minutes or 60 minutes on their calendar, but it's good to know if if you have to stop exactly at 30 minutes. Also, not only do these questions allow you to manage the meeting and manage the calls better, but they're they're demonstrating that you you're respecting the person's time, which is the key thing here. So, how much time do you have to spend with us today? So, uh, a lot of times, like people, I, I do a lot of demos for Sales Scripter. And I'll ask them, you know, how much time do you want to spend with us? You know, because I'll put 60 minutes on their calendar. But, you know, often people are looking for a 20 or 30 minute demo. So um, that's a good question for to ask at the beginning. Uh, then throughout a meeting, it's good to check in with them to say, how are we doing on time? So, you know, you're you might be halfway through the 30 minutes or halfway through the information you have. So check in with check in with them. How are we doing? You know, we're about halfway through uh, the slot, the slides here. Uh, are we going in the right direction? Are we doing okay on time? Number seven is to focus on the prospect's interests. So, when I talk about interests regarding this tip, uh, one comparison to think of: think of like if you play tennis. Okay, if you play tennis, then that's an interest for you right and if you play tennis you probably have tennis equipment a racket tennis shoes you um, know some of the name brands you probably you might enjoy watching tennis on TV you might know who some of the athletes are you enjoy playing of course and whatnot so these are things that you probably feel very comfortable talking about and you like talking about and if I play golf and you don't play golf, then you don't have all of those bits of information and background that I just went through with golf. So if I talk about golf and you play tennis, then you're going to be bored, right? And and if I don't play tennis and I play golf, but I when I get together with you, if I talk mostly about tennis, even knowing I don't play it, then you probably will have you might have a little bit more rapport with me even knowing I'm it's it's kind of it, I wouldn't say it's manufactured or it's not genuine I mean I don't have to lie to you and say oh I love tennis I play all the time when I don't but I can 
ask you questions about when when do you play or how long have you been playing or whatever and and you're that's going to be positively go in the direction of rapport uh, applying to sales a, a salesperson's interests are their company their product closing sales hitting targets making commissions advancing their career providing for their family right those are things that that salesperson gets really excited about thinks about a lot they're always thinking about their product and their company and always trying to find ways to sell more right so that's what they care about but the prospects interests are totally the opposite really the prospects thinking about growing their business increasing sales decreasing costs decreasing how hard they have to work or how much stress they have increasing personal income advancing their career whether they're an owner of a company or an employee and also providing for their family right so there these things are actually the opposite and what's interesting so if you want to build rapport focus your conversations and more on the prospects interest um, and what's interesting if I go back to this slide which you this is that earlier slide of, of different the two different types of sales pitch pitches um, the left side is more aligned with the salesperson's interests right even some of the same exact labels and the right sides more aligned with the the prospects interests so if you use this kind of sales pitch that's one way to communicate in a way that you focus more on the salesperson's interests and then if you watch any of our other webinars uh, we believe the best salesperson is the one that asks the best questions so certainly a, a good way to be focused always on the on the prospects interests is to ask more questions and ask good questions and um, just like I just gave you that example about tennis the only way we're gonna be able to talk about tennis since I don't really play it is for me to ask them questions about tennis number eight is listen to the prospect so when you again these are tips subtle tips for building rapport so when you actually I mean have you ever uh, had a conversation or dinner or lunch with someone and they didn't really listen to you I mean that's pretty frustrating versus maybe have you have you ever been like upset about something and maybe you broke up with someone you, you broke you had a end of a relationship with someone and then you ended up at lunch with someone who you know they really didn't have advice for you but they just let you let it all out I don't know if you you've ever been in if you can think of any situation like that where you've been upset and you just got together with someone and really what they ended up doing was they just listened and so that's one, probably if you can if you've ever been in that situation there was a, an, a, an increase in the amount of rapport that you have with that person if they just kinda listen to you so it you know can kinda show you have respect for what they say it some of these tips are kind of intertwined too because earlier tip was letting the prospect know that you understand them and you know what's going on with them so by by listening to them you're reinforcing or or demonstrating or or communicating to them that you you you're either that you do understand them or you're trying to understand them and it can increase the the amount of respect that they have for you uh, because listening is actually a fairly you know it's it's a fairly sophisticated communication skill you know I mean and so if you're a good listener then you there you're gonna give a better impression in terms of being an advisor and a consultant and a sales professional when you're listening you're letting it creates a situation where you're letting them do more of the talking which is always good and so how do you so to listen is important but you want to demonstrate to your your prospect that you're listening a good listener right so the way to do this is you know you can you can generate or keep good eye contact you can do nonverbal confirmations like like head nods when someone's talking uh, verbal confirmations such as oh yeah I see uh-huh okay um, reflecting back so someone shares some answers to you to, to questions you ask and then you reflect back their answers so so if I have this correctly you guys are divided into three departments but you're overseen by one manager and and that creates a conflict is and do I have that correctly so that's just an example of reflecting back and then actually a nonverbal way to communicate is just to take notes so when someone's in there talking to you I mean 
even if you can kind of remember everything they say, um, jotting jotting notes down when they're you know giving you valuable information demonstrates that you're listening, right? Because you have to listen to to take notes. And number nine is to move forward on the prospect's terms. So again, if we if we think back to that salesperson, the annoying salesperson, right? Well, what is the annoying salesperson doing? They're trying to push the the prospect forward to close. They're always they they're doing the always be closing, and I do believe in always be closing. But you know, there it, the question I would say is, what are you closing for, uh, and how are you closing? But but the pushy salesperson, well, one thing that the pushy salesperson does is they they often tell the prospect what what should be done next. So they tell the prospect, well, we need to we should do a demonstration of our software for you, and let's let's get that on the calendar. We should do this, or let's schedule this, or let's schedule that. They they're trying to push the prospect along. But a more powerful thing to do, and at least this helps to build rapport, is to let the prospect be sort of the decider in what to do next. I mean, you could provide some options or, or guidance, but letting the prospect decide. So asking questions like, what direction do you want to go from here? Now, there, it, you could say, well, you know, there's a lot of different directions we could go from here. I could... I could schedule a follow-up call with you. We could, we could schedule a demo. Applying to my own business, you, you could just sign up for an account, and there's a 30-day money-back guarantee, so there's no risk if you just want to jump in there. So, those are some of the options. But you know, you tell me what what direction do you feel most comfortable with at this time? What do you what do you want to do next? Is this something that you're interested in discussing more? When would you like me to check back in with you? So those are really soft closing questions that you're closing the prospect, but you're letting them decide what to do next and, and decide the, the path forward. And so that can help to build rapport because they know that you're not a push the pushy salesperson that's going to force them into something. When would you like to meet again? So now important things to do when you're soft closing like this is that it's really important that you've done some of the other stuff like qualify the prospect um, help make sure that they're you found pain that that you can fix build interest build rapport trial close uh, build pipeline so what I'm what I'm saying there is is that if you haven't done some of that work then uh, if you for example if you you're hounding a prospect and you haven't really communicated effectively and you haven't done your sort of standard blocking and tackling then when you say well what do you want to do next then they would probably they there's a good chance they sh could say well nothing you know leave it here and take me off your list you know but if you've done if you qualify them there's a decent fit they have some pain you've you've communicated a little bit about your your the value you offer and your offering to build interest um, you've done some of the standard stuff then you can more confidently say, well, hey, what direction do you want to go from here? And let the prospect sort of lead instead of having to push them along. And number 10 is just really kind of simple uh, because uh, I actually only had nine. So here's me being, here's an example of me being uh, displaying humility. Uh, so I only had nine, but I wanted 10. And uh, so this one's kind of not real strong. And I also knew that I'd be out of time. Uh, by now. So number 10 is just to stay involved and available after the, the sale is made. So that's just another way to to demonstrate rapport. And an example of that is um, I told you we're getting something set up for our website that I'm excited about. Well the sales already been made and the salesperson is doing a really good job of checking in with me, making sure everything is going well, and he's staying in touch with me. And 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 every time he does that, there's a little bit more rapport built with him. Now maybe he has to do that. Maybe that's you know it it's part of the way he's getting paid, or he's ensuring that he gets paid or whatever. But needless to say, more too often I think that people people close salespeople close the deal and move on to the next sale. So you never know what uh, and can, what additional sales you can make with that customer or what referrals can happen. So staying involved 
and and importantly staying of being available for people after they make the sale to make sure they're happy and whatnot can of course help to build rapport uh, so here are those 10 tips for rapport um, uh, if you so this will this video is being recorded and will be uploaded to YouTube so um, if you a, a deal I'd like to make with you if any of those tips you think are decent to okay to good uh, you know uh, then if you can return so in, in in return for this training being delivered to you at no cost if you can return the favor of simply liking commenting or sharing or this video or subscribing to our channel then that would be a great way for you to return some some love to us so uh, regarding if you want more help from us um, everything that a lot of what we touched on you know there were a couple tips that talked about our methodology and 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 whatnot so uh, if you want more help from us a, a lot of what we talked about today kind of dips into different pieces of our methodology but and 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 what we offer is we offer a thing called that we call the smart sales system and it's a sales system because you can it's something that you can actually implement from a process and tool standpoint but smart is an acronym for sales messaging and response tactics so basically the way we differ from other sales pro training programs out there is that our system and our training and our tool set is all designed to help you to communicate better in terms of what you say when you're calling, emailing, meeting with people, uh, improving what you say when you're responding to questions, responding to objections. So our the system is divided is divided in like three legs. Think of it like a three-legged stool. And so the first leg is uh, sales methodology which is you know a little bit of what I showed you here today but there's a full methodology on you know how to cold call how to set appointments how to build your value proposition um, a full sales training catalog you could actually get the the training catalog on uh, on YouTube actually you can get a lot of our training materials through free ebooks or we have a, a book you can purchase on Amazon uh, and also through recorded training videos on YouTube and you can access a lot of that for free and the reason why uh, we give away a lot of our training for free is, and we don't hide this is that our real business model is focused on the second leg of the stool which is our software platform so if you like our training and our tips and and our our, our tactics for cold calling and prospecting then you'll probably love our software application which it provides you with a, a sales pitch builder tool which will create a library of scripts and and documents there's CRM email automation email delivery um, CRM functionality on oh, oh, there's some redundant points here so um, I'll need to get that taken care of but anyways so our software platform that's really our business so we give away a lot of training for free so in the hopes that you'll come check out our software application and then the third leg is professional services so certainly we provide sales consulting and sales coaching as well uh, the pricing for our software is it's forty nine dollars per month uh, <clears throat> and per user per month you do get a forty percent discount if you sign up for the year and our sales training is available at no cost on YouTube we do offer a service called a script or walkthrough service which is a two-hour uh, engagement where I personally will meet with you and go through the sales pitch builder of our software with you and basically help you to compose all of your answers and get it all filled out together so it's only two hundred dollars once once we've completed that then you actually have a full library of scripts and emails and tools so if, one way to look at it is that if you if you got one month of the software and you got the two hundred dollars for two hours with me you'd end up for two hundred forty nine dollars two hundred fifty dollars you would have a full library of really powerful scripts and tools to use for prospecting so and th and that's all custom tailored to your product your industry here's my contact info if you have any questions uh, and feel free to contact me directly